This is by far the best mid-range phone that Huawei has ever released in the Philippines and the entire team gives it a solid two thumbs up. When the brand Huawei comes to mind, you're probably thinking of phones in the P-series and Mate series first because let's face it, their mid-range offerings don't have the same pull. But I think that's about to change because today they just launched an awesome device. Hey Unbox fam, welcome back to the channel where we take awesome out of the box. My name is Jamie and in this one, we're going to be talking about Huawei's take on a flagship killer, the Huawei Nova 5T. It's a device that packs some serious heat and costs 18,990 pesos. You heard that right? Let's go. Of course, before we begin, just a quick reminder guys, there is a giveaway running for the Rock Space Mystery Box. Everything you need to know is in the description down below, but please follow instructions correctly. Good luck. All right, let's get down to business and we're jumping straight into the deep end because we're talking about the processing package of the Nova 5T because it is one of the major highlights. Under the hood of this device is the same SoC that's in the Mate 20 and the P30, the Kirin 980. Now the company has already unveiled some details about their next flagship processor, which is the 990. But as of now, this is the best that they currently have available in the market. The Kirin 980 is paired with a generous amount of RAM at eight gigabytes, plus 128 gigabytes of storage for all your apps and media. We've definitely had our fair share of experience with this processing package, and we're glad to see it make its way to this price point. It definitely has enough muscle to play all the latest and greatest games on the Google Play Store and pretty much everything else that you can throw at it. Now the Nova 3 did have a similar variant that was rocking the Kirin 970, but while it had great hardware, I think it missed the mark because the price tag on that phone was around 25,000 pesos when it first came out. Before we forget, remember that you can push the Kirin 980 further by turning on performance mode to give it a significant boost. You're really setting the full potential of this phone loose when you do turn it on, but remember that it will come with a bit of a compromise. One of them being that the battery life will definitely be affected by it and it will produce a bit more heat. It's nothing too significant when it comes to the temps, but I would really use it sparingly if you're out and about to preserve the Nova 5T's lasting power. The processing package of this device definitely gets all of the team's thumbs up since again, you are getting this device for less than 20,000 pesos. Now, since we're already talking about the top features of this phone, we might as well talk about another highlight, its cameras. So you're getting a total of four shooters on the back of the Nova 5T. You have a 48 megapixel main camera at an aperture of f1.8, a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And as you know, that always puts a smile on our face. You've got a two megapixel depth sensor. And this is the first time we've ever heard a phone with this one. You also have a two megapixel camera that's dedicated for taking macro photography. Now I have mixed feelings about this setup because I do like the main and wide angle shooters, but I definitely feel like having a camera just for taking macro shots isn't something that adds a tremendous amount of value. It's one of those things that's good to have when you really want to take up close and personal shots, but I personally don't see that need coming up often. Overall though, the resulting photos that are coming out of these shooters are quite good. You of course have the AI prowess that the Kirin 980 brings to the table with things like AI scene detection with added features like Huawei's signature night mode to get you better looking photos when lighting conditions are less than optimal. You're also getting quite the megapixel count for the front camera that sits at 32 megapixels at an aperture of f2.2 in that punch hole on the upper left hand corner of the display. Now, Huawei has been doing a great job at fixing the hole that was their selfie game in previous releases, and we're glad to see that continue on with the Nova 5T. Photos from the front camera turn out really well, even if you are faced with more challenging situations. As always, I recommend tuning the AI beauty modes to your liking since you do run the risk of looking like a mannequin, unless that's what you're really going for, then go for it. Of course, flagship killers are known to have a few compromises to keep the overall cost of the device down, so we might as well talk about what those are for this device to manage your expectations. First one is definitely the display. Some of Nova 5T's competitors are rocking AMOLED panels, but you've got a good old IPS LCD display on this one, so don't expect colors to have the same punch. The screen measures in at 6.25 inches at Full HD Plus resolution, so you are getting a fair amount of pixel density on this phone. 
We've already touched on it when we talked about the cameras, but yes, you do have a punch hole like the Nova 4 that came before it. Honestly, I would take the notch over the punch hole, but that's just me. Huawei does provide a way for you to kind of camouflage it behind black bars if it bugs you, or you could simply use different wallpapers to make it blend in. So you might have guessed it by now, but you're also not getting an in-display fingerprint scanner on Nova 5T. So if you want your new phone to have all the bells and whistles, this might go on your list of cons. Now, I've been pretty open about it, but I actually prefer having a capacitive one, and that's what you have on this device. It's not on the back though, it's mounted on the side and doubles up as the power button. We've seen similar implementations with Sony's Xperia devices in the past, and I am quite fond of it. It's just as easy to get to and it does unlock the phone quite quickly and it's pretty accurate as well. You do have facial recognition on this device, but if you've been a long time subscriber or you've been following the website for quite some time, then you know we aren't the biggest fans of that solution. Another thing that might be taken against this newly released device is that the battery capacity falls under the 4000 milliamp hour standard. Not by much though, so we really won't take a point off. You're getting a 3750 milliamp hour battery on the Nova 5T, which will get you nearly two days worth of juice depending on your usage. Our battery benchmarks had it clocked in at 13 hours and 39 minutes, and that's mainly thanks to the power management prowess of EMUI. Topping up the phone shouldn't be an issue as well since you do have support for supercharge that can get you from zero to 50% in half an hour. So if you've forgotten to charge your phone before heading to bed, you can easily just plug it in while you're getting ready in the morning and it should be good to go before you head out the door. The Nova 5T will be available in a couple of color variants. You've mostly been seeing the black one in this video, but our favorite one is definitely blue. There's no gradient on these devices, which is great for someone like me who is experiencing a bit of gradient fatigue, but there is a special coating underneath the phone's glass panels to give it a visual punch. It's like a holographic effect that plays around depending on how light hits it. It's more subtle in the black one, and that's why we prefer the blue colored variant. As I said, you are getting glass panels sandwiching a metal frame on the Nova 5T, so it definitely looks the part of a flagship. I do, however, wish that it had more curves since it does feel a little blocky when you have it in your hands. It's not too bad, but the ergonomics could have definitely been improved. Also, one thing that has been nixed on Nova 5T is the headphone jack. I really wish that they kept it around, so you definitely want to purchase a pair of Huawei's FreeBuds or hopefully they throw it in when you buy this device because as of the time of recording this, we don't have the pre-order details yet. Now the biggest question mark that we really can't avoid talking about is the whole snafu about the ongoing US-China debacle. As you may know, they've gotten another extension, so you're definitely getting Google services on this phone, but depending on how it turns out, future updates aren't guaranteed. Despite that pretty loaded point, I still think that this device is one that you should definitely check out. You have a great processing package, the cameras do a fantastic job, and most importantly, that 18,990 price tag is just too tempting for you not to put it on your short list. This is by far the best mid-range phone that Huawei has ever released in the Philippines and the entire team gives it a solid two thumbs up. Now we'll be testing it out further in the coming days so you expect more content about the Huawei Nova 5T on our channel. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. If you have any questions about the Huawei Nova 5T, leave them down below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest tech news and gadget reviews, head to unbox.ph plus Follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. My name is Jamie. Peace. God bless. And I'll see you guys next time.